All right, everybody, let's have some fun in this video. All right, if you are new to this channel, we are, uh, hey, we're Lions fans. I'm just going to say it out loud. Um, but we also love this man, Jim Harbaugh, being from Michigan, which means our second favorite team all of a sudden became the Chargers when my college coach won me a national championship and then went to L.A. And here's the deal. I've been watching the Chargers growing up as a kid forever. There was a love for the Chargers just because, you know, the Lions had beautiful Honolulu blues. The Chargers had the powder blues, but I even loved them when they were in the darker too. The Junior Say How early LT days, like those were beautiful jerseys. But anyways, uh, the, the, the organizations are similar. And so we wanted to give some love to you, give you an unbiased opinion. So if you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button. We're pushing for 5,000 subs. I'm sure as soon as that's done, we'll push for 10. But anyways, we are pushing for it because why not? But today I want to talk about how the Chargers are the linchpin in the entire NFL draft. Anytime you hear about a team that wants a quarterback, anytime you hear about a trade back, a trade up, a move, it almost undoubtedly has something to do with the Chargers. That's just the way it goes. And there was an article recently that was no different, and it talked about, and here's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to go, and I'm going to actually show you some of those scenarios. I'm going to show them to you. All right, and it talks about how the Chargers um, help Minnesota make McCarthy a Viking. And in here it says this Chargers would set or would get picks 11 and 23 and then a late pick um, in next year's draft in order to move up to number five. Now, this is assuming all goes as normal and McCarthy's still available. Some people say Drake May um, isn't even ahead of McCarthy. So maybe May is available. Like, we don't know what this looks like. We really don't. But we know the Vikings need to get ahead of this team, the New York Giants, at six because a lot of people believe the Giants are going to be there. So let's see some of the ammo the Chargers have. Let's see what mock drafts are looking like. And then we're going to end this video with an actual mock draft. Like, why not? This is fun. I love doing these things. All right. So they have picks. Basically, they have the fifth pick in every single round. And then they also have an extra fourth round pick because of the trade of Keenan Allen and an extra seventh round pick. All right. That is a late pick. Late pick. But they have currently, if my math is correct, nine picks. They can get more. And when you look at this roster, they want picks. If they can turn nine picks into 10 picks, I think they do it. I think they absolutely do it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because they have the fifth pick. And where people are saying they have a need is wide receiver and tackle. And this is the deepest tackle class and the deepest wide receiver class in recent memory. It stacks up perfectly for the Chargers. Now, in this mock draft, it has neighbors going five. But if you look at the big board, all right, and you look at offensive tackle, look at all these tackles that are first-round talents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, now, I don't put Graham Barton in that because I think he's more of an interior lineman. But any of these guys, especially um, Fuaga, all right, especially Fautenau, Fautenu. All right. These are good, good players. Guyton is a, a project, but he is a mountain. All right. Jordan Morgan. I don't know if he ends up moving inside, but he was very good in the Pac-12. All right. Now, let's get those out of here and let's just talk wide receivers. There are a plethora of wide receiver talent, not only in the first round, but also that will be available in early second round, um, in the mid-second round, which, of course, the Chargers have another pick. So, I am going to mess around with a mock draft simulator and let's see what we can get to. All right. Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Marvin Harrison. It went how it was supposed to go. It absolutely went how it was supposed to go. So now we have um, some trades. I want to trade with um, the Vikings. I do. And I want pick 11. I want pick 23. I will give them pick five. All right. I don't even know if I'm going to go for something crazy. All right. I don't even know if I'm going to go for something crazy. All right. Let's let's see. All right. Now I forced the trade, so it had to be accepted. But 
there we go. I think that's a trade that Minnesota does. I absolutely do. Unless they just are loving Michael Penix or something like that, and they think they can get him later. So we're going to resume the draft, and guess what they did? Like This is hilarious to me. They took J.J. McCarthy. They took J.J. McCarthy. This is the first time I've ever done this. This is great, all right? Neighbors went six. Joe Alt, those would have been the two players that I would have been going for if I stayed at five. So because I didn't stay at five, what do I still have available to me? All right, what's still there? So we could go Jerzon Newton. Maybe you want to beef up the middle of your defensive line. I get that. Quinion Mitchell, maybe you want to have a great corners, right? Like just that can be your guy. You could go there if you wanted to. All right. Maybe you want to trade again. The Seahawks are offering us things. All right. I don't know. Like I am not, I am not sitting here saying that there's not a, a list of options. Maybe you want to get an edge and replace. But in this situation with what has fallen to us, I am looking at either Troy Fautenu or um, Talis Fuyaga. Both good tackles. Both are very good tackles. All right, you look at Fu um, him, he has not, and this is just, this is mind-boggling to me. Mind-boggling. In like 12, I I'm trying to think, in 1,600 snaps, all right, not pass snaps, but snaps, he is not allowed a sack at tackle. Are you serious? And he's a better run block grader than he is a pass block grader. And by the way, the Pac-12 is not short on good edge rushers. It's not. All right? Then you bring in Troy. He's only allowed two sacks. These are both very, very good players, but I'm going to take the more ready-made product. I get my tackle. Maybe I didn't get Joe Alt, but I got a very good tackle in this draft class. And now here I am sitting on the clock, with pick 23 and I can do all sorts of things, all sorts of things. Now I would say, Oh, let's go wide receiver here. All right. And I'm not going to do it though. And I'm going to tell you why in a second, but Adonai Mitchell, Lad McConkey, Troy Franklin, Roman Wilson, Ricky Pearsall, Ro or Keon Coleman, they're all still on the board and they might be around. Actually, I, I do have a thought of taking, um, no, I'm good. All right. So they're all still around. I know we need wide receiver, but I have the opportunity to get a guy in Jerzon Newton who, when healthy, he wasn't fully healthy last year, has just been an absolute dominant defensive force. All right, he's 300 pounds. He's very, very good. All right, but oh, Adonai Mitchell's just sitting there. Or maybe I just say, you know what? Forget it all. I'm going to go with the best interior offensive lineman, and I am going to, in one draft, make my offensive line from a decent offensive line to the best offensive line in football very quickly. All right, or at least one that can um, push for it. So I like drafting best available. Jackson Powers Johnson's the best interior offensive lineman I've seen out of the draft in years. All right, he absolutely is. By the way, my other team, um, <laughs> my other team, uh, just picked uh, the Lions. They just picked uh, at number 29. I just have to say this, Adonai Mitchell. That makes me happy. That makes me happy. All right, so what are we going to do here? Mikey Sainer still just went off the board. Let's look at what we have at the wide receiver position. Our um, our next pick is um, this one, and then not until 69. So what I know is that if I'm waiting until 69, I got a guy like Devontae Walker that could be available. Um, Malachi Corley is good. Uh, Brendan Rice is good. So I have to look there. Um, but there's one thing that just is destroying me here, and it's the fact that Jerzon Newton has just continued to fall. And I think he solves a lot of the problems. I see a lot of people taking Braden Fisk in this place um, for the Chargers. But if Newton falls, like, again, best player available. All right, you have just created one of the best offense and defensive line combos in the league when you do that. You have to understand what your coach is now. You have to understand what this team is. Run, stop the run. What are they going to do? How are they going to find a way to do it? And you can be like, oh, that guy would never be there. Weird things happen. 
that's the way it goes. Weird things happen in the course of um, these. So I think I only did a three-round mock. If I did a four-round mock, there's a world in which uh, Rice is still available. But now it's time for me to start taking wide receivers. And I could go on a run of wide receivers here. I could go Devontae Walker. Now, if you don't know who Devontae Walker is, he's this guy. He transferred at North Carolina. The NCAA did NCAA shenanigans. Um, but he is a guy who is an absolute uh, just stud athlete. Um, 4 4 sub 4 4 40 guy. Um, he's going to stretch the field. He's one of those guys that you have to have. If you look at the draft history of the Baltimore Ravens, and I'm not saying that yours is going to be the same, all right, but you have a very similar group of people that are doing it. They like to build. Um, their offense of line, their defensive line, um, all those other things early in the draft. And then when they get into the second, third, fourth round, they like to start taking their wide receivers. And I think this will work even better in LA with the chargers because you have a quarterback who can make normal wide receivers very, very, very good good. All right. And when you have any lead offensive line and you have the time, it gives those wide receivers the ability to do that. They like having wide receivers that have speed and can stretch the field late. They like taking them. Devontae Walker has more of the intangible or the uh, actual physical skills to be very good at the end. So I decided to take him over Rice, even though Rice is just a phenomenal um, namesake, right? Like just phenomenal if he's got any of his father in him you should have taken him he ended up going late in the third round by the way so he wouldn't be around in the fourth so my overall grade here is an a that's surprising i didn't know if it would be uh they didn't like the jackson powers johnson not because it was a bad value but i think they just are are, uh, uh not because he wasn't a good enough player in that spot i think they just thought like you know it wasn't necessarily the fit um so fuyaga Jackson Powers Johnson, Jerzon Newton, and Devontae Walker. By the way, in this situation, I would take pick 11 and 23 for number five. I wouldn't even need the fifth round pick. Um, I wouldn't even need the fifth round pick. This is better. Build in the trenches and then let your position players come later. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, if you have yet, please subscribe to the channel. We want to be your go-to spot. Um, your go-to spot. And uh, anyways... Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.